A little while ago, I got an email from Lori. Her husband, Jack, had recently passed away. Jack was a fan of my channel and had been collecting old pocket knives and tools to work on right up until he passed away suddenly at the age of 70. Jack was one of 10 children. Jack and Lori were married 21 years. He left behind two sons, a daughter, and five grandchildren. Here's Jack dressed up as Santa. Lori told me he was often mistaken for the real Santa by children. So I guess that's why it felt like Christmas morning when I opened Lori's package. Lori thought Jack would have liked for me to clean up some of these items and include them in my charity auction. All right, let's take a closer look at Jack's collection. I'm gonna start with the tools and then the pocket knives. This is a pretty good size King Dick. You don't see these too much in the States. It looks like it has almost zero miles on it. Those jaws look like they've never been used. That's a nice one. I thought this was a pretty interesting old tape measure. See if I can get you zoomed in there without the shine. I think that's pronounced Dietzgen. It's got a patent number on it. I think this is a lock. I just thought it was neat how it wrapped around and this was exposed. See if I can get started. Yeah, it is a lock. So it comes out. There's some writing on there. Master Rule Manufacturing Company, New York City. And that looks like a lock. And then if you unlock it, it goes back in. That's pretty cool. I believe this is a modern remake of an old Stanley Sweetheart tape measure. So we got established 1843. And I guess that's a 175 year anniversary. So what's that make it? 2018? The tape measure is beautiful. Still in the box. The box is a little roughed up though. There's the back of the box. That's probably a nice collector's item right there. Here's an old spoke shave. It's got some names on it. I wasn't able to read them something there and I think the blades in backwards but anyway there's also something there the mo the only thing I can really read is is Boston I don't know if it's a mix and match set this parts obviously broken I think I could turn that into a user I'd like to have a spoke shave around for projects this is your typical Coe's patent monkey wrench if you read it there, I think it says Coe's Wrench, Wooster Mass, made under Coe's patent. Now this could be a, a farm implement wrench, or it could be a multi-wrench, say, for uh, acetylene gas bottles. I don't think I found any markings on it. Neat old wrench though, huh? Here's a wood-handled screwdriver. We got the Stanley... I call that like the AA battery logo. That's the 1935 and later logo. But check it out. How about that? Bell system. KS6854. I think the bell system worked a lot like like a mill spec. Like they put out a spec for a screwdriver, maybe something like, you know, whatever width point, whatever width tip and and then several companies could bid on a job and furnish furnish the bell system screwdrivers. This one um tip needs a little work. The handle's lost all its paint. I'm a sucker for an old wood-handled screwdriver, though. 
I'm not sure exactly what this is. It's got some evidence of maybe being homemade. If it was homemade, somebody did a great job on this tip. I hope I can show that on film, but it looks like it's hollow ground. I don't know if it's supposed to be a reamer or a Babbitt bearing scraper. All the edges are pretty sharp. I don't know. Tell me what you think about that one. This looks like a field expedient file handle. The file feels pretty dull too. These three handles are a little nicer. They all have brass ferrules. And this handle in particular I really like. That's a cool shape there, isn't it? That might be fun to clean up. Jack had a nice collection of old pocket knives. Check this one out. It's almost like new. Nice brass liners. Odd uh, blade's still nice and tight. Camillus, New York. Uh, it's still nice and tight. Nice good snap. It looks like it's been sharpened, but whoever did it did a decent job. This is one of those electrician's pocket knives. This other blade is a screwdriver. I can never get these out without help. I guess my nails just aren't strong enough. And that locks in place with a liner lock. See the liner lock? They're generally not sharp. It's got a screwdriver tip. So yeah, you push that out of the way to, lock, to uh, get it back in. And that, that's nice and tight too. That's a nice one. This one's marked Sears. Got a nice look to it. Brass liners again. I like the, the long nail nick. There's your writing down there. Sears, carbon steel. 95302 maybe. Any problem with this one? That blade has had some unfortunate sharpening done to it. That's in there pretty good. That side's all right. Let's see the other blade. Now the other blade's in good shape. That'd be a nice one to clean up. This is another one that's in really good shape. You can tell right away by that crown, it's an Imperial. Yeah. Oh, Imperial England. I don't think I've seen that before. Blade's still sharp. That looks like it's really low miles right there. Yeah, it still snaps out nice. Let me check the other blade. Yeah. Looks like it's missing a little chrome there. But other than that, that's that's almost like new old stock. And that's a pretty one. This one here's seen some better days. The scales are lifted, chipped. Looks like it had a maker's mark. I can read New York City. Everything else is like obliterated. Ooh, it still has good snap. This is what I like about this one. Check out the middle liner. You see that? That's sharp. I like that. It's funny how this secondary blade seems more worn. 
from the primary blade the snaps going in it. I do like that though hopefully you can see that on camera it's really shiny someone made an attempt at scratching their name in there I think it says Steve these usually had a piece of pla colored plastic that went a piece of cellulite that went on both sides hammer brand I always like that logo oh this one has good snap too that blade is actually in great shape what else has it got the end of that's a little tore up but that's easy to fix I think it has a third yeah okay this is like an all I guess like an all that'd be a fun one to clean up too this next one's like chuck sized. Look at this tiny thing. Like some kind of translucent, maybe real, maybe fake mother of pearl right there. These tiny blades. That little blade, Chuck. I think it's got some writing on it. I don't know if I'm going to get that to focus, it's tiny. I think it says Germany in the bottom there. What's the other blade? Might just be an equal end kind of thing. Not a little different. That's got writing on it too. Yeah, it definitely says Germany. There you go. Germany. What do you think of that, Chuck? This one's got yellow plastic scales. They look to be in decent shape. Colonial. It's been sharpened over the years. So snaps open okay. It is a little loose. Definitely been used. That blade looks like it's been less used. It wouldn't take much to clean that one up either. This one's got some features I like. The long nail nick. Brass liners. These look like they might be nickel silver. Oh, the blade's super loose. Ulster. Been sharpened a lot. Uh, yeah, see, blades loose. That's just normal wear for an old pocket knife. That blade's missing its tip. That's also common. What's this? Oh, this is an all too. It's got all on it. Yeah, it's missing its badge too, huh? Hmm. It looks like a, a plastic faux wood deal going on there for the scales. Brass liners. I don't see I don't see a maker's mark. I don't know if it's been sanded away. Never had one. Hmm. Main blade's in decent shape. I don't see anything written there either. I think that's been reprofiled, but it looks nice. It's had a third blade, right? I don't see anything there for a marking either. I 
Again, not a bad little knife. And what do we got here? Oh wow. Sabre or Saber Japan. These long blade knives, usually the blade is loose, and this one isn't. And usually they're broken. This one looks complete. If it's been sharpened, they did a good job. That's actually in really good shape. It wouldn't take much at all to clean that one up. It's not my favorite style, but it's nice to see one in this good a shape. The scales are intact. Got brass liners. It looks like the the maker's mark has been obliterated or it was just never there. Huh. Yeah, it's worn. It's pretty tight though. Yeah, it's worn. Let's see about the small blade. Yeah, that small blade's been used a lot. I wish that still had a maker's mark on it. Looks like something happened here too. Some damage to the scales. This one probably didn't start out life pink. Red plastic tends to fade. I think that says Imperial. That's awesome snap. Oh, look at that. Woo! You guys see that? Wow. That's loose. Sometimes you can come in there and just put it, kind of, kind of crush this and tighten it up, but holy smokes. Okay. Yeah, and that blade's actually pretty tight. Well, okay. It's not super tight, but it's tighter than the main blade. That one's been around a little while. Yeah, look, it's bent. See? This is the type of knife where these, this whole outside is, is like a big hubcap. See the tabs? So, if I wanted to, I could probably take this whole side off and re-bend that in. Tighten it up. I definitely can improve it. So for the next few episodes, I'll be cleaning up items from Jack's collection to include in my annual eBay charity auction in November. I also decided to pick four items to list on eBay right now. I'll pin a link in the comments to the eBay listings. Due to the high cost of international shipping, the auction is open to U.S. residents only. 100% of the proceeds go to the Flemington Area Food Pantry. The Flemington Area Food Pantry provides food and personal care items to needy families, seniors, and veterans in Hunterdon County, New Jersey. I'll put a link to their website in the description. Lori and I agree that Jack would have liked the idea of helping those in need. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Thank you.